Hello and good evening, this is Rut Pozuelo from Curva.com and uh, today is time again for DAX Fridays and we're going to talk about parent and child functions. This is something that you requested on the survey I did uh, the last day before the year was over and uh, we will go through all the functions in one video because they are related to each other. So uh, let's begin. So first of all, we're going to look at the documentation that Microsoft has on these parent and child functions. In this case, they have done a great job explaining how these parent and child functions work. They have an example with employees and managers. And uh, make sure you check it out. I think they, they I mean, it's really self-explanatory. I am going to uh, do a slightly different example with the bill of materials and uh, there is so you can have two different samples on how to use these functions but make sure you check it out it is actually very well explained in this case so for our example we're going to use a very simple bill of materials here we have our product that is composed of a few components and one of the components has a hierarchy on its own, which is that one. You see that one also has components on its own. So let's look at how the hierarchy looks like. Here we have uh, the product that is composed of a few components and that one has components on its own. So it's like three level hierarchy. So here with the Power BI file a blank one, we're going to import our bill of materials. We import level one. And we use first row as headers. And now to import level two, we're going to do a duplicate and we're going to get level two delete that and now we have let's give this a proper name level two so now we have level one and level two what we want is to have two columns one for all the components that have hierarchies and one for all the single components so we are going to do an append on level one and we're going to append our level two so here we have all the components that have hierarchies and here we have the single components and we are not going to load level two we don't need that we only need this one so let's close and apply and let it load and now we're going to test the path function so path for the path function you need to add first the child column which is our component id and then we need to add the parent column which is the product id in this case it's called parent also so if we do that what we see here is that power bi is complaining saying that the MMK 115 in the parent column must also exist in the child column. Please add the missing data and try again. So this is something that is specified on the documentation for this function. Let's take a look. If we go here to path function, here Microsoft is telling us some uh, things that we need to note when using the path function. It's telling us that the delimiter is the vertical bar, uh, that the values in the child and the parent column must be the same data type. So either both are text or both are numbers, nothing else is allowed. The values in the parent column name must be present in the ID column name. So the values in parent must be present in child. Okay. And in our case, it is not. So if we go here, the MMK 115 is not in the component ID. So we need to add it. So we are going to delete this one. We will do it again when ready. Go to edit queries and we're going to add 
the parent to the component. So how do we do that? What we will do is duplicate level one, remove what we don't need, which is the append, remove the component ID. And now we're going to remove duplicates from the parent and give this component ID name so we can append it, right? So if two columns have the same name, they will be appended to each other. We're not going to load these, so we're going to disable load and we go back to level one and here we have our append query. We're going to edit that and we're going to add our component ID, the one that we just created. Look what happens. You see, it gets added in there. So we just trick Power Query a little bit to just move the parents that were not in the child ID into the child column. So now that we have the, all the parents present on the child column, let's close and load. And we are going to try the path function again. Path. And then again, we have to have first the child and then the parent. And here we have it. So here we have the entire path. Uh, here is the highest level, second level, and then here is the third level. There is actually a function that allows you to see that a lot easier. And this is the one that we're going to show you now. It is called path length. And path length, it requires only the path that we just created. So let's give it that and look what it does. It just creates a hierarchy for our text hierarchy. So now we know which components are on level one, two and three. Another function that you can use in uh, when working with hierarchies is path item. And what path item does, let's look it into the documentation. We will go up here because I think that this is a great example. So path item returns the item at the specified position counting from left to right. Okay, so let's try that. Counting from left to right, it will give us the path item. So let's say that we want to have the last components in our hierarchy. So the level three components in our hierarchy. So we will go here and we will have path item. Path item requires, of course, the path first that we just created, and then it needs the position. We want to have either the third position. In this case, we want to have the last position, which is the third one. So we write three, and that will give us the components that are available there. And you can see that that's exactly what it does. There is another one in case you, you don't know how long your hierarchy is. In this case, we have it because we have here one, two, three, but imagine if you have a huge list of materials and you have not done that, use path length. You can actually use something called path item reverse. And what it does is the same thing, but it starts counting from right to left. So if we get, well, not really, but let me show you path item reverse, of course it needs first the path. And then if we say we want to have from right to left, the one that is in that position, the first one, look what it does. It does a little bit different. So it takes the first one that it finds on the path hierarchy. So this is the first one, this is the first one, and that, that's the first one. So it's not like the other one that it will go from left to right and then you didn't find anything on the third one. Here it will always find something on the first one. If we put a two, of course there is no second level here, so this one will disappear. So make sure that you understand how these work so you don't get strange results.
the last one we're going to go through is path contains and this is very useful because it tells you if a specific item exists in the path okay so let's go back to our example we go to new column path contains and then we have there of course it needs the path that we created and now we want to know where our L pack component is. And we will get it here. It will say, no, it's not in here, it's false. Yes, it is in there, it's true, false, 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 false. So it will tell you, okay, this component is in this level of the hierarchy. So you could, for example, see that if you have path length, that that is in the second level of your hierarchy. So it makes it useful if you have a long list of components to find the ones that you're looking for and to see if this is an assemble or this is a part or... Yeah, it, it is useful in many ways. Great, so now we have explained all of the parent and child functions with the Bill of Materials example. I hope that is useful for you and make sure you check also the employee and boss or manager example that Microsoft has on their website. So this is all for today. If you like the video, please let me know by liking it. And if you know anybody that will enjoy the content, please share with them. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, as always, you can contact me in any of the social channels listed below or here in the comment box. And subscribe. I power, publish Power BI videos every week. Have a great evening. Bye.